in the event, if something doesn't quite uh, pan out, you know, or if this is something that transpired um, back in June, it's the most important thing this month is to keep your eyes on uh, the prize or where it is that you're headed to. So even if we're talking about somebody who did apply for a job and didn't get it, right? It's to not get caught up in the old energy of not getting it because I feel heavily you guys are in. Hello, Scorpio. Welcome to your July Soul Session. I'm Princess India. If you're new and if you're family, welcome back, my friend and what's not always ever. If you're not familiar with what my Soul Sessions are, they are your spirituality as well as personal development readings in which we look at the energies that you guys may encounter for a given month for the sole purpose of giving you clarity, insight, guidance, advice, and all that good stuff. You know what I'm saying? So anywho, as I've been saying to every sign prior to you, my Scorpio friend, I've been suggesting that everyone look back at their woke books and to kind of do a little bit of self-reflection on the last six months because we just got out of June which puts us at the midpoint of the year so now is a great time to kind of check in on your goals and see how much you've grown and things of the sort and what's not or whatever so anywho jumping into your reading the first card that came out is the ten of cups and the next card that came out after that is the hanged man and that is um Aquarius energy uh, like I was about to say Pisces. My mind just went blank on that. Isn't that Aquarius energy? I'm pretty sure that's Aquarius energy. But I was about to say Pisces, which is weird. I mean, I know some people say the hanged man is Cancerian energy. But I'm pretty sure it's Aquarius. But Pisces feels really right. But whatever we'll just go with it you know all three are relevant heck you know anywho but we have the hanged man so coming out of uh that's weird I, I never go blank like that that's strange anyway but um coming out of june and into um july and this is interesting what i'm picking up I mean, intuitively here there is a sense of emotional fulfillment for you guys but and i mean this is a good thing scorpio because I'm not saying, but like, but dun, dun, dun. No, not that. But <laughs> it's like, you guys are emotionally fulfilled, but I feel this sense of, um, it, it's not, uh, it's not because of like stuff. Let me say it that way. Like, because I, the thing that I wanted to say was that there's not tangible evidence of it. You know what I'm saying? But with this hangman being here, that would totally make sense. But I don't want to say it that way just because I don't like the vibration of that. You know what I'm saying? But it's more or less this happiness or fulfillment that you guys are feeling is coming from a pure place. And it could be just because of where you are in your life. You know what I'm saying? Um, or you guys coming to a, a place of fulfillment or completion within yourself, like feeling whole within yourself, you know what I'm saying? Or it can be family related, but I don't feel that it comes from external stuff, which is a good thing. You know, let me say that, that's an extremely good thing. But with this hanged man, I do feel like there is, um, okay, there is like a liaison phase. And I'm looking at the fact that these came out sideways. One of them is upright, the other one is reverse. Um, let me finish this statement. I feel like there is a little bit of you guys being in a liaison phase. You could be between jobs. Um, you could be in a life transition, but I feel wherever it is that you guys are, you're totally cool with that. You know what I'm saying? I don't really feel that it's bothering you because it's almost like understood that you're in this space and you're fully aware that it is a transition and you welcome it. So I see you guys coming into July and um, an energy of non-resistance, which is definitely a good thing. Now, the next card, what I was saying was both of these were sideways. So whenever they're sideways, which is rare, <laughs> I always take into account like both sides of it, like, you know, light and shadow aspects. But the next card is the nine of pentacles. That's my independent woman, independent man card. <laughs> and then the next card that we have is the 10 of pentacles in the reverse. So that makes sense of what it is that I was feeling with this, um, 
10 of cups, it's like the fulfillment or the um, sense of wholeness or completion that you all feel within yourself. It's an aspirational thing. Um, it has nothing to do with material goods. So this 10 of pentacles is not about like you guys losing anything or what have you. The only thing I would feel with this is like, say if uh, you were offered a, a, well, not offered, but you applied for a job, you didn't get it. Or, um, you know, money that you came into wasn't as much as you thought, or um, even, I mean, hey, if you spent a lot of money, you know, but it feels almost like something that was offered to you or was on offer, but it didn't quite fall through. But I feel that you guys aren't really worried about it because of this emotional fulfillment. Why I say that that's something that most people would aspire to, especially with this nine of pentacles being here, is because this is when you're truly in control of your situation, right? That means that your happiness, your fulfillment, your peace is not contingent upon other people, it's not contingent upon um, external circumstances, it's not contingent upon you know what your bank account balance is. It's all about what makes you happy, right? So if you're fulfilled, then no matter what befalls your path in life, it's like no one can rob that away from you. So that's why I say it, it's enviable position to be in. So with this nine of pentacles, I don't feel this nine of pentacles for you guys is really so much related to, um, how can I say it? Oh, and then I also have to say it this way, where um, in the event um, uh, that this is like kind of flip-flopped, to where this is a Scorpio person that's coming into this energy. So what I described where it's a like, say you're feeling really good, you're like on top of the world because there's a potential that you can get this job or whatever, or you're waiting on money or an inheritance or whatever the case may be. And you're waiting on this to happen. And this 10 of pentacles, that's literally the polar opposite of what I just said. I mean, this 10 of cups is you guys feeling really, really good based on possibilities, which is very similar to what I said for um, Libra, right? So if you guys are a Scorpio Libra cusper, definitely check that out because the extended child, it just was a whole nother thing that happened over there. But anyway, <laughs> but um, if this is someone who's coming into this energy, and so it's kind of like taking a lesson from what I just said, where if the reason why you guys are feeling emotionally fulfilled is because of this thing, like counting your chickens before you hatch is what I said to Libra and they're extended. It's like you're feeling really good because of the possibility and you're feeling empowered and on top of the world and really great about yourself because of something that isn't tangibly yours yet. Now take into account what I'm saying here, right? Is you're feeling this 10 of cups vibe, like you're feeling good because of something external, right? Which is the opposite of what I was saying with the first group of Scorpios, which was that you're feeling good just cause you're feeling good about yourself. Like you've gotten to a really good place within yourself, right? If the only reason why you're feeling good is because and how you would know that you resonate with this group is that the only reason why you feel good is because of the promise of something that is not yours yet, right? So not that you feel good because you got this really great job, right? Or you feel good because, you know, you have a happy home life with your, you know, wife or your husband and your kids and things. Not that. But the only reason why, like the only thing that may have pulled you out of, um, you know, uh, a rut or whatever is the promise of something that might happen and it's not officially yours yet. This is the, the group that I would uh, be a tad concerned about. Because with this 10 of Pentacles in the reverse, in the event that this thing doesn't pan out, whatever state of mind you were in prior to this thing uh, coming on offer is the place that you would go back to, right? 
And why that's important, what I said with the first group of Scorpios is because, and why I said that that's an enviable position to be in, right? Because no matter what befalls your path, it's like no one can take your personal sense of happiness, peace, and self-love away from you. But when your sense of happiness, you know, self-love and personal peace are contingent upon the external world, which is ever-changing, ever-shifting, ever-movable, then in the event that something doesn't pan out or, you know, you lose that thing, you know what I'm saying, then you end up going back to where you started. So when we talk about true self-love, true fulfillment, true happiness, true inner peace, those things are something you cultivate devoid of external stuff and states of life, right? Because those things, like I said, are ever changing, right? So that's just something um, to keep in mind there. But I think the aspiration and the goal for every human being should be to obtain this state of personal fulfillment and happiness devoid of stuff and things. Because if it is contingent upon stuff, things, people, then you're at the will of those stuff, those things and people, situations and circumstances. Whenever they're not in your favor, you're going to be, you know, unhappy or sad, you know. Next card that came out is the two of wands. So there is some need to leave some things behind. So I say even for that first um, that first group of Scorpios, um, if you guys are like on top of the world, you got your inner peace despite the things that you have, right? Um, I can also see this as something that may have potentially fell through and you not tripping, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So if we kind of step out of the inner world perspective of this, to kind of come back to uh, the Scorpio collective as a whole, right? Then, you know, whether, you know, you you got inner peace or you got inner, inner peace because of stuff and things, right? In the event, if something doesn't quite uh, pan out, you know, or if this is something that transpired um, back in June, it's the most important thing this month is to keep your eyes on uh, the prize or where it is that you're headed to. So even if we're talking about somebody who did apply for a job and didn't get it, right? It's to not get caught up in the old energy of not getting it because I feel heavily you guys are in a transitional phase. So it's going from one thing to another, but it's important to know you need to focus on what's next, right? But also with this two of wands, there's this element of um, something from the past that needs to be left behind. It could be your spending habits, you know, like if you're one of those suave, you know, debonair, baddy type of Scorpios, right, where um, it's putting a lot of uh, time, energy and effort on your appearance or how you look and things of the sort where you guys are headed um, that may be something that may need to be tempered down, meaning if you can't, not saying that you should not be cute because, you know, I'm a Taurus. By all means, be cute, my friend. You know what I'm saying? But anyway, but if it's something that's holding you back, like say if your beauty regimen <laughs> costs, you know, $600 a month to maintain and, you know, that's kind of messing you up with your bills because um, you got to tighten purse strings a little bit. You know what I'm saying? That's something that you would kind of want to leave behind. Or if it's just poor money management, you know what I'm saying? That's something you would want to leave behind. But I feel whatever this is for Scorpios, and this is more relevant. Um, well, shoot, we literally could say by the 23rd of the month, uh, my Scorpio friend, this would be most relevant. And I say this because, you know, under full moon energy, we do release, right? There's things we let go of. So I feel whatever it is that's holding you guys back from your future, whether that's, you know, thought habits, whether that's um, spending habits or what have you, those are things that you want to let go because that's what would be stopping you from going to um, the next step. If I were to step back to my second group of Scorpios for a split second, um, speaking in reference to um, stuff and things and people um, being the source of your happiness, like that temporary kind of happiness type of deal, that would be something that you would want to release because that's what's preventing you from moving forward because it's kind of this thing where 
if you get a job or you meet someone, right? Everything's great. Everything's copacetic. You're on like level 1000, <laughs> right? But the moment that that thing is gone, it's having to start all over again of building yourself back up or meeting another person or getting another job. And if that doesn't work out, it's just like this whole kind of cycle. So this two of wands is really speaking to um, making the decision to, um, to break this cycle in a sense. Now, the next card that came out is the six of pentacles, which I think is super dope. Look at that. At the bottom of your deck is the uh, six of swords in the reverse. This is interesting. Um, um, okay, wait. Before I jump back, let me finish with the Six of Pentacles first. So with the Six of Pentacles, there's a lot of similarities to this Libra reading, but um, we're talking about reciprocity here. We're talking about you guys being in control of your situation. We're also speaking to you pouring into things that pour back into you. So I feel that goes back again to my, uh, my second group of Scorpio people. You know what I'm saying? When we think about reciprocity, not just in the sense of you know, um, like that validation type of thing of like, by all means, if putting time, energy and effort in your whole 100% self into a job or, you know, a partnership or what have you, if that gives you a sense of fulfillment, cool. If you can address the fact of like, yes, that kind of got me out of bed, like meeting this person or this job, like got me out of a funk. You know what I'm saying? Like that's dope because everyone is different, right? Like some people need a little motivation, but by all means, take care of the back end within yourself of taking some time to really self-reflect and figure out what it is that will get you to that place of happiness and personal peace within yourself, devoid of everything else, right? And of course, sometimes that can be difficult to do. I mean, if you're like a billionaire, you know what I'm saying? And you didn't found your soulmate, you know what I'm saying? And you got perfect little churn and things of the sort. That may be a little hard to do to find out like, you know, what else could possibly make my life better, right? But if you're not in that situation, I would say it would behoove you, especially if you guys are like in between jobs, or um, you're in a liaison phase in your life, a transitional phase is to really take that time to tap into what sets your soul on fire. Like what really makes you happy? You know, I often, you know, do little questions um, with my clients. Like, you know, if you were left on an island, you know, by yourself and you could only pick one thing to take with you, right? What would that thing be, right? So that one thing you feel like you can't live without gives you insight into your passion, like your, your true desire, like what part of your life is extremely important to you, what keeps you sane, what keeps you grounded, you know what I mean? So those are kind of like some things you guys would want to um, kind of reflect on this month, because you want to, like, if you think of your inner will, right, with the six of pentacles, it's like, what can you do for you that keeps your inner well overflowing? For some people, it's just a relationship with spirit. You know what I'm saying? Like some people, it's their yoga that they do in the morning. You know what I'm saying? It's different for each person. But the key is, is to build a sense of self-reliance. Not saying that you need to X out other people. Nah. But it's building a sense of self-reliance so that, you know, you can keep your cup runneth over. You know what I'm saying? Now, with the Six of Swords in the reverse that's at the bottom of you guys' deck, um, this is interesting. Um, because in a practical sense, what this Ten of Pentacles could speak to, and this is going to be real practical, it could literally be, um, which is what I said for Libra too, this could be like a vacation or something or a flight that you were supposed to take and something happened, right? And you guys missed the flight and like losing your money on the flight. Like it could be something legit this practical to where this doesn't uh, end up panning out. You know, this could be some type of little hiccup that ends up happening in your family or work or what have you to where something uh, like literally, we're talking about travel here, literally, where something stops you guys from going on a trip that, um, 
you guys were looking forward to going on, you know what I'm saying? In a deeper sense, this could be a particular path that you all wanted to follow. So going back to like that second group of Scorpios, this could be a particular path that you guys wanted to follow that didn't quite, um, that doesn't quite pan out. And then this can also speak to a mindset, which goes back to this two of wands, like that thing that needs to be left behind. So it's more or less that whole scenario I said with my second group of Scorpios, where one's mind is set on something panning out a particular way or some sort of opportunity that isn't yours yet. And around like the middle point of July, is this thing either being delayed? Because I can't say that it's denied, right? This particular thing, whether it's money that you were expecting to come in, like some type of payout or something like that, and um, you guys being excited about it coming. And the thing I had forewarned Libra about was counting your chickens before they hatch and you start spending the money before you get it, meaning you're digging into savings and stuff like that because you're expecting this money to come in. And I don't see any cards here that are saying like denied. <laughs> right but this is something that can be delayed whether it's literal travel or it's um it's money that's coming in so the important thing is here scorpio is to maintain that sense of balance meaning if you've been on a fixed income and like i told libra you just got a new job like don't start spending like crazy <laughs> you know what i'm saying stay on that same place you were on until you have solid footing because this feels very much to me like something that isn't in you guys' hands just yet. But I do feel that there's a delay. And the thing that's important with all of this, which again goes back to that second group of Scorpios, that the first group that I was speaking about um, is symbolic of, is not falling back into an old mindset if this particular thing does not fall through or if it's delayed in a way that you didn't foresee or expect, right? Hope that that makes sense. So since crazy things are happening today i did something with libra that i don't usually do with you guys when i was sitting down to do um you guys reading i felt compelled to grab my chakra oracle deck which i have not used on my channel child and i don't even know how long it's probably been a hot year or something along those lines but i'm gonna pick a card for you guys from this deck to see what's going on with this my friend one card for scorpio please get for the month of july princess wants the tea of why i had to get this deck you know what i'm saying okay there you go there you go <laughs> all right the card that came out for you guys is gratitude and uh that's speaking to the third eye chakra so with this card, what it's really speaking to is being thankful for what it is that you have that once again goes back to what I was saying with that first group of Scorpios, where your happiness isn't contingent upon, you know, um, stuff and things, right? It's just the gratefulness for like being content with where it is that you are, right? And I even say being content with where you are, not just with stuff, like granted, you want to have gratitude for, you know, the people you love, the people that are in your life, the job you currently have, the money that you currently have, your ability to, you know, walk, talk, move, what have you, you know, but it's deeper than that of coming to a sense of um, fulfillment. Well, I have to be redundant. Coming to a place of fulfillment within yourself, right? It's not looking to the next best thing or looking out at other people's lives and what other people have and, you know, desiring that and wishing for that or putting pressure on yourself to obtain that is being content with who you are, where you are and what you're doing and finding a sense of um, gratitude for that. So I'm not much of a um, journaling, journaling kind of person, you know what I'm saying? Um, that's not really my, uh, this is just my personal preference. It's not my personal stilo, 
but I know that they have like a lot of gratitude journals out there. And I know um, a lot of people, a lot of my clients actually love doing um, gratitude lists. You know what I'm saying? But I think that's a great place to start to get a gratitude journal if you're not really sure how to prompt yourself on it. But um, getting a good gratitude journal and starting to just kind of, you know, read the prompts and jotting down every morning or every evening what it is that uh, you're grateful for. Because, I mean, it, it can be simple things, dude. Like, if you can walk, you can talk, you can see. If you're able to, you know, pay your bills on time. If you have, you know, a car, you know. If you were able to, to give birth to a baby, those are all things to be grateful for because there's a lot of people who can't do those things. You know what I'm saying? And the worst time to learn what we're grateful for is when we lose it. And I don't feel that all of humanity has to learn that way. You know, a lot of times we do, we take things for granted. And then when they're gone, it's like, oh man, like I miss this, I miss that, or I wish I'd have spent more time with this or that, you know, and those are all things that came up with Libra too, but it's more or less making an point now um, to, to start a, a practice of gratitude because a little secret with that too is when it comes to manifestation, it's like the quickest way <laughs> to draw things into your life much quicker is sitting in a position of gratitude, you know? If you get into like the deep, you know, metaphysical implications of things and you look at, you know, laws of attraction and things of the sort, if you're constantly in a state of wanting something, the universe gives us exactly that which we ask for, which would be, I want more money. And the universe will reflect back to you that state of wanting more money because that's what you want. You want more money. <laughs> so the universe is giving you another state of consciousness and existence in which you are still wanting money because that's what all of your energy goes into. You know what I'm saying? So it's important to be in a space of gratitude because that births a sense of abundance of, you know, I've already overcome the world in a non-narcissistic sense, right? <laughs> and it's like embracing and that puts you in a, a feminine energy of receptivity. So you're drawing things in. And that's what that six of pinnacles speaks to. It's like having um, an overflowing well where you're constantly just drawing things into you, drawing things into you because there's no energy of resistance, right? And that six of swords would speak to an energy of resistance. So I think that's why it's uh, important where this whole message comes up of not falling into like old mindsets or getting caught up if something doesn't pan out because it's knowing that in due time, it will, right? Hangman is all about divine timing and trusting in that. You know what I'm saying? So anywho, I'm going over to my network to do you guys extended, my friend. So if you're about that life, follow me on over there. If not, I still love your freaking face and I will see you guys sooner than later. My Scorpio friends, pay attention to these things. I don't know what side the videos are on and it's like the network link and subscribe and stuff. So love your face. <laughs>